Well, good morning. I'm so glad you're here this morning. Why don't you stand up and join us? whether you release it or not. Come on, begin to acknowledge His presence this morning. Acknowledge the King of glory. to sing the song that's been going on forever and ever. You are worthy of all our praise, God. We just invite you to come have your way this morning as we bless your name. Praise. 
same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the way. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will. try to take away from you. Just remember the blood of Jesus covered it already. You ain't got to worry no more about it. You don't have to worry about your situation no more. You don't have to worry about the sin that's holding on to you because the blood of Jesus covered that for you. So whenever you're going through something in your life, just know that the power of Jesus, the power of his blood, the power of his name covered it all. So proclaim that over the situation in your life. Proclaim that over the enemy. The enemy has no power over you. The enemy has no power over your family. He has no power over your household. He has no power over this country because the blood of Jesus covered it all. So as we sing this today, just remember it. Proclaim it today. And let that be your anthem, that the blood of Jesus covered it. Here and now I 
draw a boundary against every weapon that's formed. The thief in his plans will pass over, as he claims no claim in this war. I plead the blood. blood of Jesus. The enemy can't take my family, cause this home belongs to the Lord. So I'm not afraid to remind him that he has no claim in this war. I plead the blood. the blood of Jesus is more than the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus. Cause my future is glory to glory. My freedom's been purchased in full. For all of the weight of His suffering. reward. I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus. It's more than enough. I plead the blood of Jesus. My shield and my shelter is my defense. No 
over my children, over my family. I plead the blood, I plead the blood over my future and over my body. I plead the blood, I plead the blood over our schools and over our cities. I plead the blood, I plead the blood over the darkness, over the enemy. I plead the blood. It's my defense. I claim it over and over again. My shield and my shelter. It's my defense. I claim it over and over again. My shield, my shelter. It's my defense. I claim it over. Holy to the King. 
the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all your name your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cries Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing. Holy to the King of Kings. Holy. Father, we 
we place a helmet on our heads today, that helmet of salvation once again. And we declare that our mind is the mind of Christ. Father, that our thoughts are captivated by the Holy Ghost. That, Father, the thoughts that are of the enemy are bound today in Jesus' name. No trespassing enemy, no trespassing and devil in Jesus' name. But our mind is set upon you. Our wholeness, Father, is found in you. And we thank you for that today, Father. Lord, and we do declare today, we do sound the trumpet of triumph, Father. The trumpet of triumph today. (laughs) Yes, the trumpet of triumph in our lives, Father. We bless you, Father. We honor you. We declare the trumpet of Zion is blasted today, Father, with our victory. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you that we can come before you today. And in a matter of minutes, Lord, you can rearrange, you can create, you restore and you heal. And we thank you for that, Father, because your word is true. Your word is faithful. Your word is all powerful. Your anointing is what breaks the yokes, Father. (laughs) We thank you for that, Lord. We bless you for that, Lord. We stand in agreement, Father, today that thy kingdom come and thy will be done in our lives as it is in heaven, Lord. We love you, Lord. We honor you today, Jesus. We love you today, Father. We give you the honor and glory for you are the great I am. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that even when we say amen today, that you do not stop working. You do not stop moving. You keep going on our behalf. We love you for that, Lord, because you are a God that is for us and not against us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Restoration, rebuilding, reclaiming in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that that has been lost, that it will be found and it will be reclaimed in Jesus' name. We blow that trumpet triumphantly. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. God's good, isn't he? He's a good God. He's a good Father. You may be seated this morning. And, you know, when we were standing and praying, the Lord quickened in my spirit that he can do anything like that like that, right? That we can come and trust him and he will move mountains on our behalf. Sometimes, you know, we always say and encourage, let's just keep going. Let's just believe in God as we walk and trust. But listen, we also remember that a God is, our God is also a God of suddenlies. Amen. And he can suddenly do something on your behalf. Just like he can take time, he can also do something suddenly. Amen. And I have things in my life that I want God to do suddenly. Don't you? I want him to do something suddenly. That's why I encourage us in this room to pray. We need to pray in the spirit because it encourages us. Isn't that what the word says? It encourages us. It builds our faith. And I know that at times I need my faith built. I don't know about you. But listen, the first thing I do is I start praying in the Spirit in my heavenly language and trust God that He's going to move on my behalf. Amen? In Isaiah 55, in 10, it says, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So in my word, my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me void, but it will accomplish everything what I desire and achieve the purpose for which it has been sent. You will go out with joy and lead forth in peace. And the mountains and the hills will burst into song before you. And the trees and fields will clap their hands. Ah, Isn't that a great scripture? 
that we know that God is the one that we can trust for peace. Where there's no peace, let the rain come, the rain of God, the word of God. You know, it is. there's no rain right now, but I'm declaring that there's going to be rain, amen? That this drought and heat is going to be broken and that we it can make a difference. And that is what the rain of God comes and does in our lives, the spiritual rain. It comes and it waters and it cultivates and it does great and mighty things. So we sometimes need to change our perspective, change our perspective, have the frame of God create a perspective that God really wants to rain on our lives. Nobody likes drought. Do you like drought? No, I don't like drought in the spiritual realm either. We need to hear his voice because guess what? We can have rain in our lives every day. Don't sound so excited about that. The rain of God can be in your life every day. The spiritual rain of God can be in your life every day. If you seek him, you will find him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is faithful to us. He is the God of the reigning word. Not only does he rain down on us, but he also reigns in our life. Amen. Don't you love the English language? How there's so many words that sound the same, but mean something different. And they even spell them different. Wait till you spell them like we do in Africa. Everything is spelled different. But you know what? He reigns, which rules in our life. And he also reigns and pours out his spirit in our life. So if you need God to touch you, your provision, your health, your joy, no matter what it is, let God's word reign in your life. And he promises that the word of God will never, never return void. It will always go forward and it will accomplish what it is purposed to do. Amen. So I encourage you today, do what Do and seek and find out what God has for you and let him rain on your parade. Who needs rain on their parade today? I do. Let the rain of God come and rain on your parade. Amen? Well, I'm glad you're here today. I'm excited. I'm excited. Every day is so fun serving the Lord. He's new and exciting every day. When you read his word every day, that's the key, is that you need to know this word so it can rain in your heart. Amen. Read his word every day. I have a great reading plan. If you don't have one, go to our webpage. It's on there. Pastor created a great reading plan. Read the word, even when it's monotonous or boring. Read it. It is life, and it is the reign of God that we need. Amen. Well, I'm glad you're here today. If you're first time guest, welcome. I'm glad you're here. If you're first time online or watching with us, welcome. There's a guest card or a visitor's card right here if you want to fill that out. If your address has changed or anything's new or you have a prayer request, put it on there and we will take note of that, okay? And so thank you for being with us here today. We have some fun things happening this week here in the sanctuary. We have VBS coming up. Amen? I know I'm excited about it. Here is my prop today. I have a prop because the theme of it is the game of life. And this is a Rubik's Cube. Who can, who can do these things? Who wants to do these things? No. Who, you can do these? I'm proud of you. I've never completed one. I, I, I've never done one. I've never finished one. But it's going to be a fun thing because, listen, the game of life is all about God. Amen? Being a part of us and being with us. And so I want to encourage you today, right after service, Miss Kristen said that many of our children have not registered here. We have guests that are registered online that are coming, but our kids here today need to register. So if you haven't registered your children, Miss Leslie's at the back. And she will help you register your children because guess what? We need a head count. We're feeding the kiddos. We got crafts for them. We have exciting things and we need to know who we're catering for and how many. You can still register online if you want. There's even a, a, a QR code right there. And um, or if you go on into your bulletin, there's info how to get registered. Please, we need you to register today. Register your neighbor's kids and just bring them. 
right? They need to hear about Jesus. And who wants to be out in that heat? It's going to be inside in the nice, cool sanctuary. So come and do that. With all that said, we are decorating this week, and we need all the help we can get. So if you can help and commit, even if you can't commit the whole time, but you can come for an hour, Miss Kristen needs it. She is looking a little pregnant there and, and she's getting a little tired and she needs more help this year than ever. So let's help her. Today they're meeting at three o'clock to help decorate. Three o'clock here today. Come out and, and help with, um, with that. All the other times are in your bulletin when they're going to be here to decorate. Monday also at three o'clock. So come and be a part of that if you can. It's a great time of camaraderie and a lot of fun that um, you can have with them. But also today, once again, we need to um, move all these chairs out of the way. And all the men and women are looking at me like, not again. Yeah, well, that is that way. So right after service, if you can help, um, we would love your help. We're going to move all the chairs this time against that wall so that we can fully decorate in here right after service today. So because um, I also want to remind you this Wednesday there's no service because Tuesday and Thursday night is VBS and then Friday and Saturday is VBS. So there will be no service here Wednesday um, for VBS. We also have a supply, school supply drive. We need these boxes filled out here with all school supplies. If you don't want to bring school supplies, you can donate online. There's a spot that you can hit and just donate, and then we will go buy supplies and fill up the backpacks, and we're going to hand those out on the 29th of July this year, because the kids go back to school like the 10th of August. It's pretty soon, so let's do that. We also um, have, what else do we have? We have um, a singles luncheon coming up. They're meeting July 23rd. That's next Sunday, right off to service. We would love to have all the singles go out of lunch. They're meeting right off to church and going together. Kim's number is in here, and she will be glad to inform you of anything else you need to know, but you just meet and go to lunch. And then also the youth barbecue is coming up Friday night, the 28th. And this is for all the youth and families. Um, see Milton if you have any questions. And here's his phone number, but we would like to have you join us. All right. Well, at this time, if you want to hand out offering envelopes, that will be great. If you happen to be watching online, if you wouldn't mind um, going and getting to the web page and clicking on giving, it's very easy to give that way. And we really, really um, appreciate your faithfulness in that. So we're going to let Pastor come up and do the offering and uh, welcome you all. All right, thanks for all of that. Thank you guys for being here. Um, if the youth have not been dismissed, you have to go upstairs to youth ministry. You guys can go ahead and be dismissed uh, to do that. As we're doing that also, we want to have uh, one of our precious members here named Jill's uh, come to the front. His Jill's right here in the sanctuary somewhere, we hope. Or if he's back there in the back, maybe someone can grab him. <laughs> there he is. Good. We'll have Jill just go up, if you don't mind, come up here and just stand up on the platform. We're going to have Jack join us here as well. And I'm going to have let um, Jack say a few words in a moment, too. Just go ahead and just come up the stairs on the platform. We can see you better. Yeah. Jill's has been a, a faithful servant of ours now for several years and has done a tremendous job us out in ushering and working out in, in physical ways around the property. He's got a son that lives on the East Coast. He's also got a wife who's back in Africa right now. Things are changing now for him to, have to get back with his son once again and live near him. So you may see him next Sunday. I think he said he'll be here, but we want to make sure we don't miss him. We want to just bless him as he travels out to the East Coast and lives there closer to his son. And he's promised us to come back and visit as much as possible. And we'll see what God does in the future here uh, to even bring him back to Texas by faith. Because many times we tell folks he put a rubber band on the back of their pants and the, God brings them right back to the best state in the nation once again. Amen. Amen. I'll let uh, Jack just share a few things here also that Jill's has meant in our church and to you. Hallelujah. So Jill's has been a very big blessing to our church. She came to the Go Ye Discipleship class uh, in one of the smallest Go Ye Discipleship classes I had, but he was very faithful. He learned a lot and 
And uh, what I really appreciate about him is he applies the Word of God in his life. And he applies it everywhere he goes. And, and he understands that salvation is only found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he goes out of his way to help people uh, find this Lord Jesus, the same one that he found. And we're very thankful for him. He's been very faithful in everything he's ever done. Would you like to say anything? <laughs> All right. I know that he loves every one of you guys, and we love him, and we're so thankful that we've had him for the time we've had him. But we're going to release him to the Lord in the name of Jesus. All right. Amen. Let's just reach our hands and our faith out towards Jill's. Even let's pray for him. Father, we do speak blessings on this great man of God. Thank you for the call of God in his life. Thank you for his family, Lord. Bless him as he travels. Give him traveling mercy, protection. Uh, bless him, God, with his son, the family God, the new, uh, the new bride, and all these things that are happening in his life, even for the new job he's going to have in the future. May all these things just come together, uh, all for the glory of your name. We thank you, Lord God, as you remove every blockage from before him. We bind any work of the enemy, God, that tries to bring something uh, evil into his life through this transition. And we say only good things happen for him, Father. By the power of your name, your word, and your spirit, we just bless him and send him off, God, with our love and our gratitude and our thankfulness. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. 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 Praise God. Jill's and I hope we'll see him next week as well. Excuse um, me, Mike. Yes. One more thing, brothers and sisters. His wife's name is Judith. She's still stuck in the Ivory Coast, and the paperwork is being held up. So I would encourage all of you guys to join in prayer for his wife so she can come to America and be with her husband. In Jesus' name. Good. All right. Appreciate him. Um, we have um, also, of course, important birthdays happening this week, like, like most weeks as well. Um, one of our little uh, first, our birthdays happened a few weeks ago. It was a little on the front row here, a little Lorraine's with us. This is our newest grandchild of uh, Nate and Sarah's, and she's a still a tiny little, little baby, but she's growing and getting, getting stronger and bigger every day. So we thank God for a safe delivery and a blessing upon her life, and glad she's finally in church now. Maybe she can get saved today in the service as well. We have a birthday this week for Jesse Carlo. Because it's his birthday, he went and saw his mother up in Maine, and so he's going to be fishing here uh, probably today. But uh, I'm going to give him a scripture when he comes back here probably next week. Uh, then I'm watching online here is a Kala family. We have Paula Kala. As I prayed about her, I received Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 11, that says, If a snake bites before you charm it, uh, what's the use in being a snake charmer? And as I read that verse there, I heard the Holy Spirit is telling me that um, God wants you to understand there's giftings in you, and uh, that God's going to cause those things to manifest at the right time. Otherwise, you're going to find the enemy's going to try to come in there and be like that snake that bites you before you can manifest what God's placed inside of you. And so just keep on exercising the gifts of the Spirit, the faith of God, the Word of God, and don't let the snake bite first. You make sure you bite first. And make sure you're the one that takes and keeps that snake back uh, by, by God's authority, by God's grace as well. Amen. And also back in the back row here, we have Maria. Maria Molina is having her birthday this coming Saturday. Give her a hand. God bless Maria. She's uh, from Puerto Rico, but also living here now in Texas. And her family's all with us all, all today as well. We appreciate her life as a Tremendous grandmother, mother, woman of God. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 3 says, If you honor your father and your mother, things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on the earth. And as that verse has been, as I read that verse last night, the Spirit of God was saying, Because your grandchildren and children um, have been honoring you, you actually have been a blessing to them because you've allowed them to bless you. And because they've blessed you and honored you, there's great things happening in their lives that things you could not provide for yourself in any kind of material type way, God's providing for them in a supernatural way because of the honor they're giving to you. And you can probably agree that they're honoring people, honoring children, honoring grandchildren, and God's blessing them for that. So you actually are here to be a blessing to them in that way also as they're doing that. Did I miss any uh, other birthday folks having a birthday today or this week coming up? No, yeah. Oh, the twins, their birthday is today? Now give me their first names again. Adelaide and Soraya. Adelaide and Soraya. We'll pray blessings on them again. I've sorry, probably written down the day. One year old today, the, the twins. And your birthday is today too? The daughter Laura. And, or or let, let, right, right here in the back row. How old is she now? Six, Six years old. God bless you. Uh, <laughs> give us a good wave here. You're going to have a good year as well. Did I miss any other children? 
Okay, well, as far as anniversaries go, this is the anniversary week number 45 for Fred and Yvonne Torres. These guys are sitting right back over here. God bless them. They've been uh, in this church longer than I have also. There's still a few folks here that have been here longer than we have. And uh, they've been a tremendous uh, couple showing the glory and the, and the love of God in their lives. We're going to pray blessings on you in a moment. Anybody else having a wedding anniversary today or this week coming up? Okay, let's have our ushers come to the front here. Let's take some time again to pray blessings on these people that God would just take and just use this year for His glory. We just give praise and thanks for them. So, Father, we do thank you, Lord, that for those who are having birthdays today and this week, they were born, God, we believe, together for such a time as this. We declare, God, the plan you have for them shall come to pass this year. We speak, God, divine protection, provision, and favor to be their portion. We praise you, God, for fruitfulness in their lives. God, bless these twins, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the Hatleys as you bless them, O oh God, to grow in the things of God, be protected from any physical injury or harm, and have, O oh God, the dew of heaven upon this precious God, this young lady as well in the back. Touch her, God, where she's at. Bless her at school. Let it be a great school year for her. And those, God, that are here that are adults, we just say, Lord, use them for your glory. Uh, bring Jesse, God, back here safely. And say, oh, God, have your way in their lives in the year ahead. We also speak blessings, God, upon Fred and Yvonne. We say, God, it shall be the best year of their married life yet. We praise you, God, that you uh, draw their hearts ever closer together. Help them, Lord, be a godly example of folks that see them and watch them as a, as a Christian couple. And they shall be, O oh God, a light and a beacon to a lost and dying world around them that needs the example of a godly marriage. Now, Father, what is also sown today in this offering, let it, God, be used for your glory. Bless, O oh God, our city of Austin. And as Cheryl has said also, we agree together today, rain is coming to our city. We just command these um, airwaves to be filled with clouds, those clouds to be filled with rain, and showers of blessings come upon this region in the name of Jesus. We bind and rebuke, O oh God, the natural forecast of drought for the weeks ahead, and we say this drought is being broken in Jesus' name, and there's coming forth relief, O oh God, to our state, our region, our city, by the power, God, of your Spirit, we thank you, Lord, that you move heaven and earth in behalf, of God, of the people of this region and nature. And we thank you for it. Now, God, let us again use this day. We say, rebuke the devourer for thy name's sake in our behalf. Help us, God, be wise stewards of all that you give us and cause debt to be broken off our lives. We thank, all, thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, ushers and usherettes again today, helping us out here with this offering. And we're going to start a brand new series here for those that are in the sanctuary, those that are watching online. Um, it's called Restoring the Cutting Edge. I'm always praying about um, the series we do here, uh, what God is speaking about, what God is saying to, to be doing, and what God's doing in the spiritual realm. And I really sense, you know, that God is um, going to start causing His people to have the ability to get a whole lot more done with a whole lot less effort as they start relying more and more upon the Holy Spirit to work in them and through them as well. You might have heard of a story years ago about how there was a contest among lumberjacks in Canada. It happened every year, and um, the two lumberjacks came together to start from the starting bell was going to be uh, going off. It did go off. They had this great big old giant log to cut in two, and the first lumberjack actually went over and started sharpening the edge of his axe, while the other guy just started chopping away at the wood. The guy sharpening his axe took about five or six, seven minutes to get his, his axe to a very, very sharp edge. And even though the guy had a five or six or seven minute head start, he still lost the race because the guy with the sharper edge was able to cut faster and cut better and cut more thoroughly in that wood himself. I'm talking this morning here about having a blessed family. I believe God wants to restore the cutting edge to our families in this hour, in this season. Amen. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10 and verse 10, it says, If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But it says wisdom will bring success. So I believe God's going to give us some wisdom keys today. Those that are here that are grandparents, those that are parents, those that are singles, as well as all for all of us to receive some good things because all of us touch people that are either in families or we're part of a family ourselves and how many would agree today the family is being attacked like never before in our nation and nations of the earth? Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, the New International Version, it says, As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. 
So we're believing God that his word will sharpen you as I speak the word of God out of my mouth today. May it be as iron sharpening iron. May it not just be my words, but also be God's word to you because some of you folks will be having kids. Some of you have children. Some have grandchildren. But all of you influence people in local churches like this as well. And God wants you to be one who is iron sharpening iron because God wants godly families. I've seen also, you know, on the local news or even international news around the world, number one reason they say we're having so many mass shootings and mass killings and so much violence in the streets of many big cities is because of a lack of godly fathers. Fathers are not taking their role to raise up their children in the way and the, the fear of God. Amen. And so when fathers actually love their children like God loves us, you're going to find the children most of the time, almost all of the time, will not grow up to be murderers and be mass murderers and be those involved in serial killings and things of that nature because the love of God will flow into them even through their natural fathers as well. The last chapter of Malachi, last chapter of the Old Testament, before there was 400 years of biblical silence in Malachi, it says, I want, to re- I want to return the hearts of fathers back to the children and the hearts of children back to the fathers, or I will strike the land with a curse. So God says either or, either the hearts of fathers go back to children, children back to fathers, or there shall be a curse upon the nations who do not do that is what God's word is saying. How many folks know that God never lies and God never exaggerates? That word that God gave is true. So it's up to us as Christian people, believers of God, to have strong, godly families as much as we can. So let's write some things down today. I'm going to talk about the, um, some truths about family, some things to take home with us here today and put into practice. We're going to pray at the end of the service as well for the families of our congregation, those that are watching online. And I'm going to also believe God to hear his voice because God wants to speak some things to us about families that are here in a specific type realm as well. I really believe we are really blessed to have some great mothers and fathers in this church. Great godly grandmothers and grandfathers as well. You're already doing that which pleases God, and you're already bearing fruit from that that's evident to people in this church and around our community as well. But God wants to increase that. Amen? God wants to restore the cutting edge in our families once again for many people. So number one is this. There are family values that actually bring godly results. In God's Word, there's family values that will bring actually also godly results. Now again, we've all discerned here our families are under attack. But again, the God's Word tells us families can be healed as nations can be healed when people humble themselves, pray, and seek God's face. You know, I love that movie. Those who came here and saw that on Wednesday night, uh, I think it was called Faith for Potatoes. Never saw it before. But I've heard a whole lot about Angus Buckham. He's a prime example of how a man was totally dysfunctional a father in his family, and all of a sudden when the Spirit of God came into his life and he got saved and born again and Spirit-filled, all things began coming in line in his family. And now he's blessed and not cursed. And in that movie at the end they showed a miracle where though there was drought in the Ladysmith area he lived at in South Africa where Cheryl lived at herself for about a year, even though there was drought and no rain, God did a miracle and caused great big ripe big, vibrant potatoes to grow underground with no water and no rain. You see, God can bring potatoes from faith. Amen. But God can also do things underground for family members who have parents that are praying for them, seeking God's face and instilling godly values in them as they're growing up. This year has had us considering a time I spoke in the past few months ago uh, about the seed and the sower found in Luke chapter 8. In that parable of Jesus Christ, he talks about four kinds of soil and the same kind of a seed. And he shows that in two of the kinds of soil, it was bad soil. There was soil that was rocky, and there was soil that was a path that men walked on. But there was good seed sown on, the, on, the, uh, or good seed sown on bad soil that brought no crop and brought no fruit. Then he spoke about bad seed on bad soil. He said there was a time where the weeds, or I'm sorry, bad seeds sown on good soil, where the weeds and the things that were of 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 a rotten nature were sown into good soil, and it sprang up or sprung up, better English, and it choked out the good wheat that was around it. 
Then it said, finally, the fourth kind was good seed sown on good soil. And it says, that seed caused a spring up of good wheat that brought forth some 30, some 60, some a hundredfold, because it was good seed on good soil. Let's read now about this in Luke chapter 8 and verse 15, New Living Translation. I'm going to read from this today. It says, the seeds that fell on the good soil represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. So as you read that verse there, there's a whole message in that verse, but it says there's three main ingredients to folks producing a huge harvest in their lives. I believe all of us want our children to far exceed what we did ourselves in our time, the short time we've lived on this earth. I want my kids to be more anointed than I am. I want them to, have to bear more fruit than I've borne. I want them to see, to see things, more things than I've seen myself. We want our children to be blessed. Amen? So how do we do that? Well, it says here, first of all, practice these three dynamics. First of all, be good-hearted. What does good-hearted mean? Well, the Bible says there's none good except for who? Except for the Lord. So it means be God-hearted. Have your heart full of God. Do all you can to make sure in your family God is first and people are good, God-hearted people in your family. Then it says, hear God's word. I think in families, it should be evident that we're hearing God speaking to us. In our family growing up, you know, Sarah on the front row can verify this as well, that um, we had dream, God, we would dream dreams. We'd share dreams that God gave us overnight. We get sometimes prophetic visions. We'd hear God speaking about certain things around us. We'd sense things and discern things. And we'd read Bible stories and watch things on the TV and listen to CDs of Christian music and so forth. Let God's word fill the house up and it brought forth results. But also says, don't just hear God's word, but also cling to God's word. Now that means to hang on to, hold on to, and use God's word in times of trouble and times of turmoil. Amen. How many here have ever clung to God's word and seen God brought you through tough times and bad times? Because you would not let go of a word that God gave you, a scripture in God's word. When Satan came in like a flood, God came in and pushed back the powers of darkness because you, you were clinging to a word from the Lord and a scripture from God himself. Amen. So many times when Satan's attacked us in our finances, perhaps in our marriage, in things or stuff, or our, even our emotions, our minds. We find a scripture, we cling to it, we speak it, we confess it, and God shows up and God shows himself strong and mighty every time. And as Susan prophesied this morning, it's a time of declaration to declare what God says, cling to that, confess that, and believe that what God says is going to come to pass. Amen. You know, again, I'm just stopping here because I, I, I told my family here yesterday that I was so perplexed that um, two weeks ago, 10 days ago, last weekend, there were people everywhere at all the restaurants, all the highways, all the byways. There was just a crowd everywhere for some reason last week. Yesterday, 79 was empty. A huddle was empty. Restaurants were halfway empty. There was a real, just a, a real dirt there of things going on there. And the Holy Spirit was like telling me, you cannot go by the things that are happening in the natural realm around you to see what I'm doing myself. Though you see things seem to ebb and flow in the natural realm around you, don't let that influence you in your, in your walk of faith with me, says God. You cannot live by sight. You've got to live by faith. Because the fact is, the same number of people still live here. They got the same cars. They got the same whatever around them. It's just there were things changing as far as what I was seeing with my eyes this last weekend. But God's saying, don't again, don't ever get in the realm of, of seeing things by the natural eyes only. See things also by faith, because I am bigger than you think. As I'm here this morning speaking the word of God from this pulpit, I'm, I'm already believing God. As I'm speaking God's word, God is healing bodies. God is setting captives free. God is unraveling tactics and schemes of Satan in your families by the power of his spirit. I don't believe I'm just speaking the words of a man. I believe I'm speaking the words of what God wants to be spoken today that's going to bring forth lasting results. And his word, like you said today from Isaiah 55, will not return void. But it will set forth today and accomplish what God wants it to purposely accomplish by his spirit. We want our children to have good soil in their family relationships that will bring forth also a huge harvest in their lives as well. And so these three dynamics need to come to, come to pass. 
Having a healthy family also is more challenging now than when I was a child myself. There are more things that children can find themselves involved in that are evil today than there was 40 years ago. And those that are over 50 years old will say amen. And yes, that's true. They've got more channels. They've got more media. They've got more things that, and access by computers. There's just things around us that are more evil. Folks are acting different, speaking different. Kids that are four and five years old are learning things that our, my generation would not learn to other teens or even early 20s sometimes. And it's just we're changing. The world is changing in many ways around us. One father and one husband in our church told me before church a few weeks ago, I said, why do you always have the ability to come into our services here on Sunday mornings? You're always upbeat and you're always smiling from ear to ear. What's your secret for that? He goes, well, my wife and I drive separate cars. <laughs> now, I'm just joking because I couldn't, didn't want to point anybody out in the service about that today. But that's a sad truth sometimes. Because of the COVID phenomenon, some folks don't want to be together as much as they were years ago. And I pray that God restores the cutting edge back to a husband's love for wives and wives loves to husband, love to husband once again. If it's God in dole, may it be sharpened by Cupid's file this day in Jesus' name. Amen. We need to realize that great families don't just happen automatically by themselves. It takes some work. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14. I'm going to read the New Living Translation on this. I'm going to read this verse twice in this message. It talks about Nehemiah. God called him. He saw the walls of Jerusalem had crumbled. Their defenses were gone, and it seemed like it would be totally impossible to ever put that, that boundary protection back once again. Yet God told him, I want, this, I want this wall rebuilt once again. So verse 14 says, Then as I looked over the situation... I called together the nobles, the rest of the people, and I, and I said to them, Do not be afraid of them, the enemy. Remember the Lord, who is great and glorious, and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. That's what God is saying today. You see, the walls have crumbled many ways in our country. There's gaps in this nation. You can't allow the kind of sin we've allowed to come into our country and not have some gaps take place in your country. Amen? There are some gaps. That's why God is calling us also to intercessory prayer. Because it says in Ezekiel, I look for a man or woman to stand in the gap. And may God find some. Amen? May it not say to of us, and I could not find one. May it say of us, and I found some. And they stood in the gap, and they pushed back the powers of darkness by God's Spirit. I believe in the word, this word them in Nehemiah 4.14 is talking a lot about our culture. Our youth, our children are facing a culture today that is overwhelming in many ways as far as the flesh is concerned. But I still believe greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. Amen. I don't care how bad Satan gets around us as far as his victories would go through people around our children. I still believe God is greater in our children than the devil is in folks that are ungodly around them in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm, just, I'm, just praising, I'm praying to God on a regular basis. May our children be revived. May they be restored. May they be filled with the fire of God. May they have a viable relationship with a living God. May they hear God's voice and fall in love with Jesus so much that tears coming down their face is common. Because the Spirit of God is coming on them and causing them to get blessed so much they just can't help but cry and weep before God's presence because God is so good in their lives. Our children can have that, amen? Because a lot of you guys had that. When you were little bitty kids, you had that. Our children need that, amen? And I believe God wants to do that also, and that's going to be coming for our children more and more and more. God's solution to a broken world or in our, our society is actually the family. God, God began with a family with Adam and Eve, and then their children were born there. God began with families, and God still blesses families for the nations as well. Psalm chapter 68, verse 6 says, God places the lonely in families. If you're here today or watching online, you're a single person living in a place by yourself. The local church, a place like this, is a place to plug into because there'll be families here that will embrace you. They will love you, they'll relate to you, and they'll spend time with you, and you'll find yourself going into families. Amen? 
You know, Jill's again is a good example of a guy that comes from a foreign country. He's now got great friends, folks that laugh with him, play with him, do things with him beyond the church. And they're going to be friends for life in his, in his life as well. God takes folks that are by themselves, puts them into families to bless their lives. Amen. If you read the entire chapter of Psalm 68, you're going to see that God wants to be a father to the fatherless, to help out the widows, to help out the orphans, and to set prisoners free from their bondages. These things take place by godly families and by God's love. Okay, number two is this. There is no perfect family. Let's say amen. <laughs> there is no perfect family. Even our family is not perfect. Right here in the front row, I got a prime example of that as well. You know, Cheryl, Sarah's here. Sarah's only here. Sarah's only here once in a while right now, so I'm really going to pick on her badly because I don't want, Kristen's not here. Daniel's not here. I'll pick on her. But no, Sarah's as close to perfect as you can get. But even Sarah is not perfect. Amen. Cheryl is not perfect. I'm not perfect. There's no perfect family on the earth. So what am I saying? Well, because there's no perfect family on the earth, there is a lot in the Bible about dysfunctional, imperfect families. The Bible talks a lot more about dysfunctional families than it does functional families. You got to realize in the, in the Bible, the first family, Adam and Eve, had two sons, and those guys, Cain and Abel, one killed the other. That's the first kids born on the earth. One's a murderer. That's a dysfunctional family. I mean, folks know when you kill your brother, you're in a dysfunctional family. Then you got Abraham comes on the scene. Abraham is having a relationship with a prostitute. Actually, he does, hears God's voice, disobeys what God says, and births Ishmael, and does things different times in his life that's totally against what God says, yet God calls him the father of many nations, the beloved of God, and the man of covenant. You find Isaac. Isaac is the son of Abraham. This guy shows favoritism, and he likes some Esau better than Isaac. He brings forth jealousy. He brings forth all kind of deceitful things and so forth through them. Dysfunctional family. Then you find Isaac's son Jacob is a liar, a deceiver, deceives his own brother out of the birthright. And this guy puts his own kids at the forefront of the enemy coming against them that they may get killed first and not him. That's called a dysfunctional family. Amen. Then you find Saul. Saul was a big mess. He was a guy who got involved in witchcraft, consulted mediums, uh, was a guy that was out, out for his own good, his own honor, his own statue, his own name. You go beyond him to King David, beyond him. King David committed adultery with Bathsheba, had, his, had her husband murdered, and was a guy that counted the armies of Israel, and God said, don't do that. Dysfunctional family. His own son named Solomon becomes king of Israel, has over 1,000 wives, and turns his own heart away from God and towards idols. You're going to see it time and time again in the Bible. God tells the truth about even great men and women of God. And most of them come from dysfunctional families. Amen. But praise God today. New Testament church. I believe it's possible to have a functional family more so than dysfunctional. All you guys that are here, including myself, almost all of us come from dysfunctional families. There's been sometimes hurts, wounds, and bruises from those dysfunctional families. And God's here to bind up the brokenhearted, to set captives free, and heal your heart if you've gone through hurts, wounds, and bruises at the hands of dysfunctional parents as you were growing up. So number three, I only got three points here, but number three is a long one. So having a perfect family is not the goal. Having a perfect family for a Christian is not the goal. What is the goal? Well, the goal is to understand, first of all, all of us have good, bad, and ugly in our families. Amen? There's good, there's bad, and there's downright ugly. I've seen it myself in our 42 years of wedded bliss. What God is telling us as family members, as mothers and fathers and grandparents, the good part is we point our kids towards the good, we teach them from the bad, and we protect them from the ugly. That's what the goal should be for your life as well. Point them towards the good, protect them from the bad, keep them also from the ugly. So in our family, the good was anything that was God. We tried to point our children toward things of God. We tried to show them the Bible's good. Worship and praise is good. Coming to church is good. You folks that are here today on Sunday, please come back next Sunday. Coming to church is good. 
You'll learn good things. You'll be exposed to good things. You'll actually have good things happen for you in a church service like this. Amen. But also worship is good. And not just here, but also in your own car, your own house. We teach taught our kids the fruit of the Spirit is good. Kindness, meekness, gentleness, love. All these things are good things to embrace and see manifest, hopefully, by their parents. The Holy Spirit is good. And we try to make sure our kids would see the Holy Spirit in operation, not just here, but also in our house. Amen? Our kids will say one thing to all their friends around them that, that's true, I believe. What you see here for Cheryl and I is what we're like behind the scenes. We're not something here and something some, somebody else somewhere else. We're the same. Now, I do hold back my humor somewhat from the pulpit because um, <laughs> folks that are, you know, I, I, I've got what's called advanced driving skills. I've also, got a, I've also got a thing called advanced humor skills. And those who operate in advanced humor skills can take my jokes and understand them. So I don't give those to you folks here because half of you guys will leave the church. Because you're, you're not all quite there yet. But I will do a training session one day. And I'll move on beyond that as well. The bad things are things that cause harm in your life. We try to teach our children to avoid bad habits. And what are bad habits? And why bad, these, bad, these are bad habits. Things not to embrace. Things not to do. We try to get them uh, away from bad entertainment. Try to help them choose songs, music, movies, TV, so forth. That will actually be good for them, edify them, strengthen them, and not really harm them. Or bring fear in their lives. Or bring demonic oppression to their lives. We try to steer them away from the bad and more towards the good. We try to also steer them towards good friends. And friends that would let she be um, safe to put them in for overnight stayovers. We talked about that a few nights ago with Sarah. And uh, we had some friends that she had. I, th I think it's good that our, our kids had unchristian friends, which is great. They had non-Christian friends. But we would not let them spend the night with them. We didn't know what was going on behind the scenes in their houses. And we're very glad we did not do that for, in many cases there because there's some things that could take place that weren't so great. We knew their friends, learned about their friends, and had to point them towards good friends as well. And also even towards good girlfriends and good boyfriends. We would take and we would discern if uh, these, guys, these, these girls and our, our son as well, who's still single, and we say, God, cut off what you want cut off and bring on what you want to bring on. And so by the miracle of, of God, you know, even the whole story about Nate coming into Sarah's life was a total miracle. Um, I'm just going to give it in, short, in a short little detail, this short little detail there. Um, the, Nate was sent from California at exactly the right time to go to Concordia, Bio, uh, Concordia College out there in West Austin. And was sitting, I think he said, by himself in a, in a uh, cafeteria. She's with her friends. And I think one of her friends said, see that young man over there? Why don't you go talk to him? And the Holy Spirit, when she saw Nate, the Holy Spirit says, that's going to be your husband. <laughs> Amen. Now, I, I, I want to stop right there and give a caveat. Do not do that, young la ladies that are here if you're single. <laughs> because that is not the way God normally works. <laughs> Carmen had that take place to him about 500 times. You're going to be my husband. So did Elvis Presley. Okay? But I want to say, in this case, she did hear from God. And God told her that. And she began talking to him. And they're now living happily ever after. So I'm trying to tell you guys that um, God can really bless you to ha help your children have the right husband or right wife. When you pray for them, counsel them, and help them, it can take place. Amen? The last thing was the ugly. And the ugliest things that actually bring scars. There's things that take place in our lives that bring scars in our life. You know, I learned, like I told you guys, I've been here for a long time. And my mom died at 10 years of age when I was 10. And my mom died suddenly of acute liver failure. My father wept and cried on his face on, on a bed for three days straight. Uh, he didn't hug us, didn't hold us, didn't say, I'm sorry, children, you've lost your mom. He was just so in, in, into his own grief, which I understand he loved her a lot, and he was not even saved yet. He just cried and bawled and cried for three days. And then when he just finally comes to his senses somewhat and starts talking to us, he starts talking about moving to Japan and letting our aunt raise us. That brought a little bit of a scar in my life. Uh, I just lost my mother. Now my dad's saying, I'm going to leave you also and go across the world and live in Japan. Same thing took place in, in Cheryl's life as well by her dad when her mother died. And so I learned to tell my children, if one of us ever die, we'll be right here for you. 
We won't leave you nor forsake you. If your mom dies or if I die, we're not going to move across the world and just forget about you guys because you lost your mother, you lost your father. You need us in this time of grief and this time of pain. Amen? So you see, you learn things that produce scars in your life that you can help your kids not have those scars in their life. You you catch what I'm saying? Be aware of that and know that as well. I think it's very important to to understand that also. Also, things like... uh, picking the wrong battles. There's sometimes that we could have picked some battles that our kids could have gotten involved in, and the Holy Spirit said, don't get involved in that fight. Don't go down that path. Just, just stop that battle. Just stop your mouth. Be quiet. Let me fight for you, is what God was saying many times. And also iniquities, things that scarred us by bloodline curses or bloodline magnetic things that would draw us towards evil. We tried to see those things broken and cut off our children's lives. that They would not vex their lives the same way as they put scars in our life. Amen. Those are just things to think about. Let's read now Romans chapter 7, uh, verses 18 through 22 about this also. Paul the Apostle is battling with his flesh. And he says, For I know that in me, that is my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that is what I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it's sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. Later on he says, it's only through Jesus Christ that I have victory over my flesh. You know, what, what did Jesus tell Peter? Before he died on the cross, he says, Peter, Satan is crouching at the door of your heart, and he wants to master you. You've got to realize that Satan's got demonic spirits or evil spirits watching you all the time. And they want to find, they want to make sure that you get tripped up and that you have opportunities to sin and do things that grieve God's spirit or give them a place in your life. Okay? Be aware of that. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be um, paranoid about that. Just realize that. That's why it's important to pray, put on the full armor of God every day, bind the powers of hell and darkness, take up the full armor of God, the shield of faith, and quench every fiery dart of Satan on a day-by-day basis. Amen? That's why it's so important to do that as well. You know, again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I shouldn't go that way, that far, this way, but um, I just want to say again, uh, I'm not mad about this. In this movie I saw Wednesday night about the little boy that got crushed by the tractor and got crushed and killed. But that was an unchristian family. And I did the same things that little boy did in Missouri on tractors. I got on the fenders. We got on the back of them. They almost tipped sideways in ditches with us. We went on um, the back end of pickups going 70 miles an hour down gravel roads, hanging on by one hand to the little chain on the side of the tailgate. We did all kind of junk like that. But because I believe God gave us angels... We did not get killed or broken bones one time. That was God's grace. Amen. And so we need to be praying over our children, praying over us on a day by day basis because Satan comes to kill, steal and destroy. But God comes to bring life and life more abundant. Amen. So be praying about that also. How many of you have found also that your mouth can sometimes write checks that you have not put enough emotional deposit in your kids' hearts to be writing those checks. What I'm saying is, you know, when you tell your wife or your kids you love them, you do things for them, you serve them, they know you love them unconditionally. You can say some things once in a while that would actually cut them to the bone otherwise, but because you put so much in their spiritual deposit of their soul, they can take it. They can hear it and they know you, they know you love them. They know you're joking. They know you're not really just telling a, a, a full, just a real serious thing there. But if there's a real dearth there of emotional deposit in your wife, husband, or children, you can say the smallest little thing, and they'll get offended by it. They'll get ticked off by it. They'll get angry about that. They'll shut down, and they'll cut you off. Amen? So God is saying, be aware of the spiritual deposits you're putting in your family members' lives. Is it big enough to say what you're about to say? Did you hear what I said there? Is, it, is there enough money in their bank for you to write that check with your mouth? You, you catch that? 
Because sometimes we're writing checks and giving them to our family members that are, that are hot checks. They're going to bounce. There's not enough money in their bank to cash that check. Okay? So it's important to be taking and writing and, and putting in deposits in your family members before you bring some heavy things into their lives. Some of us also are facing overwhelming stress and pressure in our families that's dulling the axe. Chapter, John chapter 16, verse 33 says this. Those things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Things in the world will give you a dull edge, but God's word gives you a strong cutting edge, is what God's saying. No matter what the enemy is coming against your family with today, it has already been overcome by Jesus Christ himself. There is no weapon formed against your family that God has not paid the price for through Jesus Christ to see it conquered by the power of his word and the power of his spirit. Amen. John chapter 17, verse 21 goes on and says that they all may be one as you are one. Father, as you are in me and I'm in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. This prayer of Jesus Christ before the cross says that God wants us united through Jesus Christ to become one. And the reason is that the world may believe in Jesus Christ. When your families become one in Jesus and God, your neighbors see it. Amen? Your coworkers hear about it, and they see it. Former, our former um, fellow Christians and believers, they see it. You're an example of a godly family by the unity that God puts in your life. Jesus has already prayed for the unity of the family, and the purpose is that the world may believe upon him through unity in the family. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3, New International Version again says, It takes wisdom to have a good family, and it takes understanding to make it strong. Now, what is wisdom? Wisdom is the appropriate use of knowledge. Some folks have got knowledge and no wisdom. Amen? We need to have knowledge mixed with wisdom in our families. But also it says here, you need to also have a thing that's called understanding. The um, Hebrew word for understanding here actually means skill. It takes skill to make a strong family. What's that mean? That means it's time to read some books, perhaps, do some studying, do some research, and get some skill in raising strong families. They don't come automatically. They don't come by happen chance. They come by skill, understanding, and by wisdom. Amen? These things can come together and give you a strong family is what God is saying to us. Our goal should be to establish our values as well. Now, what's a value? Let's, let's write this down. A value is a statement or a declaration on how we're going to live and who we're going to be. A value is a statement or a declaration on how we're going to live and who we are going to be. That's our values. Now, values help us set up boundaries that give us focus, help protect us. And the first value God gives Christians is what? Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. You'll have no other gods before you. You shall serve the Lord your God only and put him first in your life. That must be the number one value of your family. God is first. Not your father, not your mother, not your brother, not your sister. God is first in your life. When God is first, he says, seek first my kingdom. All these things will be added to you automatically when you seek his righteousness and seek him first in your life. Our goal should be to establish values. Rick Warren, big mega church in California, he gave a quote in a book of his. It's, it's called The Law of First. And so he says, good families put these things first and teach their kids what it means first in these things. It's called an acrostic, F-I-R-S-T. The F stands for finances. He said, we teach our kids the first 10% of all they receive goes to God. That's first. Amen. Number two, I is interests. Your interests must first of all be God first in your interests, and then the world and your own giftings come secondly. Love what God loves and hate what God hates. The R 
is relationships. Put God first in your relationships. That means you won't go after the, the prettiest girl in class when she's serving a, a foreign God or a false God or no God at all because she's pretty. You'll go after godly things and values first. Amen. And then hopefully looks will come along with that. Or for a girl, money and hunk and muscles. Okay. <laughs> I say, if you put those things first, you're going to be in trouble. You put God first. Amen. Then S is the word schedules. Put God first in your schedule. And T stands for troubles. When troubles come, always go to God first to solve your troubles and nothing else. We need to also commit ourselves to the journey. The word commit means to make decisions in advance regardless of the circumstances. I'm going to settle today what I'm going to do tomorrow and commit to it is what God is saying. I'm going to read one more time. Deuteronomy chapter six, verses six and seven. Let's read this here. It says, and these words, which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. Now, I'm going to stop with that verse as I have Greg come to help, help me out in the front here. But I want to say, I want you to look at this verse one more time in detail, what it says here. These words I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house. So when is that? When you're in your home, somehow, some way, God is saying, make sure you diligently, diligently interject God in your house so through prayer, Bible reading, worship and praise, examples, whatever. When you walk by the way, what is that? When you go to shop for groceries, you go to shop for toys or clothing, you go to come to church, this is walking by the way. You show God in that. When you lie down at night, show God the last thing that children should be hearing is about Jesus and about God and I love you. Amen. Every night, you know, Sarah can testify as well. Sarah does the same thing for her kids too, I think. Is we told our kids a night-night story. We'd make it up in our brain, some loony story. And we tell them how much God loves them. And we say, and I love you. And once the story's all done, we say, okay, little Sarah, it's time to sit up. And I put, put my hand behind her neck. And I'd sit her up. And I'd throw her on her pillow, lay down, slam her on her pillow. And she'd smile real big and go night night and we did every single night and we say and we told them we loved them we cared about them we held them we embraced them we pointed them towards jesus christ but also says last of all and when you rise up when you get out of bed in the mornings I mean, the first thing your children sense this is the house of god as for me and my house we will serve the lord we're going to pray here and I'm going to ask God to take and strengthen the families of our congregation because I'm hearing God's Spirit speaking to me a few weeks ago on this series. There's some dullness that God wants to sharpen, some axes that God wants to grind and bring forth a sharpness and a cutting edge back to it once again. And I heard the Holy Spirit saying there's some families right here today that will be here this morning. You're having turmoil on your families. There's too much yelling. There's too much divisiveness there's too much tantrums going on there's too many things happening there that God wants to settle and God wants to bring forth a peace God wants to bring forth a peace upon your home I like this lady here again in that movie on Wednesday night she says they said what are we going to, what are we going to call our brand new house here what's the word going to be for our house and the wife says peace peace shall be this house Father, right now, when our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, we speak peace over our homes today. Where there's been fighting and turmoil, where there's been, Father God, tantrums, and there's been sometimes even rage and sometimes even physical things happening that don't bring glory to your name, we declare, God, peace over our house in the name of Jesus. We declare, God, our children are children of peace. Our grandchildren, God, are grandchildren of peace. And God, we as fathers, mothers, grandfathers, and grandmothers are also people of peace in Jesus' name. We just right now bind the powers of hell that try and bring turmoil, that try and bring divisiveness, 
to try and bring divorce, to try to bring destruction. We rebuke you, Satan, and say our house belongs to God. We belong to God, and our children belong to the Lord, and they shall be His. Let's all stand to our feet now, please, as our prayer partners come to the front. And I just want you to stand up. I still hear, hear the Holy Spirit say one more thing here. Let's just take it as one more time for prophecy's sake. Let's just bow our head and close our eyes one more time. If there's been some things that's been overwhelming happening in your household, your family, things that are out of your control, that just seem overwhelming, God's talking to your heart today that he wants to bring that peace into your house. Would you just raise one hand to God right now? Just right across. Be honest. It's right across this place. We've got hands up left, right, and center. There's a war upon the families in our nation and the nations of the earth because Satan knows if he can get our families, he can get our nation. If he can get our nation, he can bring down the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Father God, right now again, with his hands are raised up, we say, God, your word will not return void this day. You, God, will show these people what they can do, Lord, in a practical realm, in a, in a spiritual realm, to see, oh God, the works of hell unraveled in their houses and see, Father God, divine order restored in the name of Jesus. Right now, this week, Father God, I just, I just rebuke the work of hell that we're trying to bring ignorance, that we're trying to bring in confusion. And I say there's clarity coming, there's direction coming, there's counsel being released, there's wisdom loosed, and understanding shall be their portion for their children and their families in Jesus' name. Father, we praise you, God, that we have godly families and a godly heritage before us in Jesus' name. You that are watching online, be praying for your family, your family members. Do all you can to pour into their emotional bank account and try to love them unconditionally. They may be knotheads, knuckleheads that are doing bad things, but God is telling us and showing you to be patient and let the battle belong to God. Let God fight some battles for you. And say, God, I give my husband, I give my wife, I give my child to you. And I say, God, do what you will in their lives to bring them, God, back to you, Lord, or to you for the first time. And I praise you, God, that they are yours, they shall be yours, or they will be yours in the days ahead. And I say, the battle belongs to the Lord in my family, in Jesus' name. You that are out there watching online as well and they're here today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you got to start there. As far as family goes, the reason that God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, is the Holy Spirit operates like, like a female operates, comforts, holds, speaks to us, loves us the way that a, a mother would. And so there's like, in a, in, a, in a spiritual sense, there's a Father, there's a Son, there's a Holy Spirit, like a family. That works together. God's always been for families. God's always made families. And so to belong to the family of God, all you got to do is say, Lord, I, I, God, I realize I can't save myself. I need a Savior. And your, your word says, oh God, that if I just say, oh God, I'm sorry for my sins. And I know, God, I need you in my life and my heart. I ask you, O oh God, to come inside of me this day. Be my God, be my Lord, be my Savior. You'll hear my prayer. So, Father God, I call upon your name this day. And I say, Lord, I receive you in my heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross and paid for my sins upon Calvary. Be my God, be my Lord, be my Savior. I accept that, your forgiveness, receive your forgiveness. And I thank you, Lord for living inside of me from this day forth. Help me now, God, to follow you in your ways. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. If you pray a prayer like that today, or any time God hears that prayer, God answers that prayer. If you're in that congregation, you pray that today as well, please come to the front at the end of the service. Find one of the prayer partners here to get with them. They've got some materials for you. They also want to talk to you and pray with you some more, perhaps, about your decision. Amen. If you need to get, receive prayer today about healing in your bodies, financial issues, relational issues as well, these prayer partners are here to pray for anything you want to pray about today. 
prayers of agreement. And thank God we have anointed prayer partners. They're seeing real results take place as they pray for people. God is touching individuals in this miraculous ways. We thank God for that. Amen. God is so good. Alex, if you don't mind, get the microphone. We'll let Alex dismiss us in prayer here in a moment. And there's going to be a sign up, you said, in the back as you leave for Vacation Bible School. Please try to see um, Leslie for that. And then also we're going to have some young, some men and some uh, stronger ladies. If you don't mind, help us to move chairs to this side over here, right? It's this wall over here, all of them over here stacked up. God bless you for your help on that. Have a great week coming up here. And thank God it's cooler in here than it is out there. You guys were blessed. We're blessed to have our AC again this week. May your AC work this week in Jesus' name. And the rain is coming by faith. Amen. It is coming. Well, God bless you, Alex. You can dismiss us in prayer. Appreciate you, folks. Thank you, Pastor. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the word that we've given today. We, we ask for blessings over those that are leaving, but we also ask for blessings of those that are coming into our lives ones that are going to be there tomorrow that we didn't even know were coming because you put them there, Lord. So, Lord, we thank you for all the love that you give us. And if, if we don't understand, Lord, we trust you. We have faith in you, Lord. So, Jesus, thank you. In your mighty name, amen.